going on, everybody? I'm Adam. Global AZ Meet. I'm sitting here with Rich, Adam aka Rich. the Duke. Good to see you, brother, again. Getting freaking uh, fuzzy up here at uh, Encore in Tucson, Arizona. Are you? Yeah. Do you live here in Tucson? I'm in Phoenix, a couple hours away. Okay. So, I was. Uh, you guys played club right last night. I'm more of a fan of this club, but club is nice. still a good club. You know, how was the turnout last night? It was great. We had a great time. I, I love Arizona. It's like my wife and I have had these kind of fantasy moving scenarios of like where we would move if we decided that we were going to leave Atlanta and Arizona is, is on the top of the list. I love the, I love the, uh, I love the lifestyle here. I love, I love the culture, the Southwest culture. I love desert climate. It's just a really cool place. And I think people really love their rock and metal music here too. They really support the bands. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, uh, definitely got a bunch of, uh, bunch of rock and metal bands here. They live great here. Scene. It's great, yep. man. I know I, a lot of, I remember at one point it was like, like half the guys that I were listening to were all moving to Phoenix. I was crazy. Like Halford lived here and the, the, the uh, Cavaleras Dave lived Mustaine. there. Dave Mustaine. It's exactly right. Everybody was moving here and it was just one yeah. of those towns. Yeah. And I know why. It's a great place. Maynard and Jerome. You know, you got him from Tool. You know, it's, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people have lived here, uh, moved here. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be moving to Vegas, you know, kind of leaving California just because it's getting too cluttered. And, and expensive. And expensive. Yeah. So Vegas isn't far from California, plus you've got some good uh, studios and recording and music out there still. So yeah, I just know. spent two days off in Vegas, and that's another place I'd love to live. Party, party, party. Same kind of desert climate. People are really cool. Lots of stuff to do. You don't have to live in uh, in the the, the no. adult Disneyland that is Vegas. You can live out where Brian Slagle lives on the outskirts. Oh, there's so many guys, right. like you said, in bands that are living there, and it's I don't know, man. That, you know, you no longer have to live in the Nashville, New York, or California. That's state, exactly you know, right. Spend the millions of dollars at the big houses. <laughs> I know. You can spend three hundred thousand here and have a house just as big. You I know. know. So, and you're gonna have to hide in it in July. Yes, that's about the only that's about the only downside here in summertime. Just don't go out during the summertime. So, anyways, uh, you guys are still kind of riding on the the Judas album from 2017, and kind of just brought that up. With, you know, it's been a couple of years. Um, you guys are working on the new one, Timeless. I believe it's due out next year. Yeah, I, I, you know, our goal is to have it out in the spring of next year. So the single "Nowhere to Run" just came out two weeks yep. ago. Just a new video just dropped for that too. Yeah, super excited. The video's freaking on fire. Uh, the single just uh, climbed second week, just climbed in the top forty on the Billboard charts, which is amazing. We were number one on the Sirius XM Octane charts, so it's reacting super positively and and we knew it we knew the song was really good it's right. the same thing with Judas when we when we first finished it we were like wow this is this is a no-brainer it's a great song it has all those components that makes it an excellent Fozzy song uh, and nowhere to run maybe even a little better in some ways in that we've we've really been connecting with it live Judas um, yeah, it has some orchestral elements to it. There's lots of layering of guitars, um, and the vocal breakdowns and the verses are very interesting and um, introspective. Whereas Nowhere to Run is more, uh, it has some of those elements, but it's more of a straight ahead rock song in certain areas, and it makes it just translates beautifully live. So we're having a great time playing it. <laughs> Been jamming out to it the past few to, uh, few days, so really digging it. Um, Thank you. Loving everything you guys are doing lately so far. Uh, can't wait for the new album. I'm excited. Um, so you guys just uh, opened up for Maiden. It is sold out. Iron Maiden, by the Iron way. Iron Maiden. Not just a not a yeah. Maiden. Not, sorry, not just Maiden. Yeah, the Maiden. Iron Maiden. The the my Iron Maiden. You know those dudes <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much like made me want to play music when I was right. a kid. Who I. I saw them on the Peace of Mind tour um, and also uh, on the Power Slave tour. And it was, 
you know, they changed my life. I mean, I loved me some Priest, and I loved me some Ozzy and Scorpions and Accept, and I was a metal kid, and and I even loved the L.A. Strip stuff. I love a crew, you know. I, I oh, old school eighty stuff. Yeah, I was Poison a, crew. Yeah, I was a big fan. So, um, one of the best things about opening for Maiden, uh, besides the opportunity to play on one of the biggest stages in the world, uh, it was their biggest show of the U.S. tour. Bank of California Stadium sold, sold out. out. It was incredible. Um, but one of the my favorite parts about it was just the it's, it's you know the hero's journey. You know, like every great movie, whether it's Rocky or uh, it's you know uh, the Star Wars original trilogy is just the journey of like right. and uh, of, of us Jericho and I. When we were kids, the two of us in particular were the biggest Maiden fans. And the fact that over a 20 year span of kicking down doors and, and playing any place that would have us, um, really fighting the odds. And, and people will say, well, how do you say you're fighting the odds? You have like a celebrity singer and the, some of the guys in the band came from like a uh, another somewhat well-known band. But the thing is, is that those open doors, but those credentials also close oh, yeah. a lot of doors. Exactly. You know, when people say, oh, you're the band with the wrestler in it. And, right. and it, it frustrates the hell out of Chris because he's like, do you like the band or not? Right. Let's, you know. I, I know a couple bands like that where they kind of throw in their, their attachment to the higher ups just to kind of promote the band. You know, it shouldn't be like, it's, it's about the band. It's not about the one person. You know, it's about everybody as a whole. Yeah, and Chris a long time ago said, stop putting... WWE superstar Chris Jericho and five, like stop that like at some point this band's gonna have to sink or swim on its own merits um, and I, honestly you guys are you guys are kicking ass man you guys you. are climbing a lot as I mentioned earlier it's like I remember covering you guys at the old club right with like basically 100 capacity you know and you guys again opening up for Maiden at a sold out freaking arena show I mean you, you really can't beat that no you know? and that's the, that was for us it was like the great acknowledgement of like Hard work matters. There are a lot of people who don't like what we do. And, and I, the truth is is that there's a lot of bands that people bring up all the time. Like Tool, that's their favorite band. It's like, I think Tool is one of the greatest bands on the planet, but they're not what I would listen to. It's like, right. it's like going to a restaurant. We all have like different palates. We, different chefs cook for different types of palates. And, and there are certain types of bands that I really like and certain types of bands that don't. That goes for art and movies and television shows. So I never get offended when someone goes, hey, I like your old band Stuck Mojo better or I don't like either one of your stupid bands, uh, but I sure do like wrestling. Right. And I want to meet Chris. It's like, I don't care. Like, right. like it, I, don't take it, I don't take it personally because I have like really good friends that are super talented that are in bands that I don't like. Right. You know what I mean? And, oh, and, that, definitely. And, and I have such great appreciation for the skill and the art and the craft and the commitment to it. But that's why I'm so happy that things are the way that they are. And, you know, uh, when I grew up, you know, there were only a few big releases a year for, for rock and metal. Right. You know, I mean, you, you, you were lucky if you got a Maiden record came out and a Priest record and you'd be lucky if you had a Saxon record and you had right. a Metallica record but really there were only like 15 or 20 big records that were going to come out there were then you'd say okay well, what's Rush doing what's Ted Nugent and ACDC and, but now uh, there's so many different kind of breakout genres and well, there's definitely. so many hundreds of thousands of bands making music that it it really allows you to really find those bands who speak to you. there's going to be more crap because there's more bands so obviously there's going to be more shitty cooks right. and making meals but you I'd rather you get a fish dude to find what you exactly want that's exactly right but I love the fact that we live in a day and an age where you can just go on Spotify or Apple Music and just search for new bands or and I've, and I've discovered some new bands just by letting it play you know just cycle through the next so one so cool you know, hearing, right hearing you know like this you know another band coming up and be like 
oh man, this band's pretty badass. You know, never heard of them before. And you go check them out, and they've got a couple albums out. And it's like, you know, again, I'm a fan. You know, you, again, it's, but that's you get the digital age now. You got so many apps and everything else between my two or YouTube now, Spotify, iTunes, and all that stuff. You know, it, and it becomes harder for I think bands trying to sell actual physical albums out because of that. But you know, you got you got to kind of adapt and, and go with the times too. So, and bands can make as much money as they used to now. Let's take out the top one percent guys like Metallica, yeah, who Metallica made. Yeah, yeah, because they're selling millions of albums. That's a different scale. But for you know working class bands like us, who for a living we make a record and then we go out on tour for two years and we play some theaters, some medium sized clubs, and sometimes we'll play a little tiny. You know, if you're in Lubbock, Texas, you're you're playing a roadhouse rock and roll club, and uh, and, and for us. What is great about the digital age is that there's 10,000 different ways to monetize your band. Yep. You know, in the old days, uh, when my old band Stuck Mojo was signed to Century Media, we had two ways to make money. And that was from gigs and record sales. And if you weren't selling enough records to recoup the money that the label loaned you to make the album and the videos and for touring, you never saw any of that money. Very few bands really ever saw money from that except for the top bands. The only way you ever saw any money was from going out and slugging out in the clubs. But now you can monetize videos on YouTube. You can, you know, you've got all these digital platforms that are playing your singles. And yeah, it's fractions of a penny, but all those little fractions adds of a penny up. adds right. up. Right. In the old days, we never got anything. Right. So it's like at least now we're getting, right. you know, and, and because, because of computers every everybody can can see where the money came from yeah. in the old days the record company you just had to take them at their word yeah. like how many records do we right. sell hmm, let me see you know now you can see exactly you know how many are sold what country what state down the city yes you can see what uh, uh, gender I mean age yeah, it's I mean, amazing. You can, it breaks down on everything I, I love it I think it's I think it's great and I think it's just gonna help younger bands help uh, to find a way to connect with their audience and find out who their audience is and stay in touch with them. It's great. In the old days we used to get, people used to mail us letters to a P.O. box and we used to have to write back, thank you for your night. You know, like now right. it's instant. After yeah. the show you can communicate with people. It's incredible. That's cool. I, you know, I, I still love bands that kind of do that, you know, like you guys and the still not huge bands, but I understand why they can't do it anymore. You get like Maiden and, and the big bands where you can't hang out after the show because you just get flooded with thousands of people, you know, but you guys are still, you haven't reached that, I don't want to say you haven't reached that level, but you guys still hang out and it, it's yeah. cool that bands still appreciate the fans and kind of do what they can do, you know, to hang out and... And it's fun. I mean, it's part of the experience of being in a band is meeting people, right? I mean, how many times have we all been on vacation and sitting in a restaurant and you meet somebody it's like, yeah, that guy's got a freaking Thin Lizzy shirt on it. You know what I mean? You right. have to strike up a conversation and talking to people who you have common interest in. And let's be honest, the people who come to see Fozzy, they like my band. So generally, I'm going to like the same bands they like. Right. We strike up cool conversations. And then I end up building friendships with people that you meet on the road. It's great to see them every time you come to town. It's awesome. <laughs> Speaking of music and artists, any anything you're currently listening to as far as certain artists? Uh, anything on your list? Um, I listen to weird stuff because I try not to. I mean, I. So if, if we're just I, it, it might not be weird to me. So. Okay. <laughs> so so my favorite new band that I've been listening to is this '80s synthwave band called The Midnight. I don't like. There's barely any guitars on it, right. but I'm just obsessed with it because. Um, it reminds me of of the '80s. It has that sound, like it's the aesthetic the keyboard sounds, everything. And for me, it's like smelling a perfume from a girl you used to date right. or something. You know, it kind of brings. And they're they're excellent songwriters. But as far as like modern aggressive music, I mean, I 
Man, I think Corn makes better albums today than they made when they first came what out. Do you, what do you think of the newest one that just came out? I think it's great. I, man, I, and I think part of it is, uh, and I know I don't want to, I don't want to denigrate the, the former guy, but I think Ray, their drummer, Luzier, who I think is one of the best drummers on the planet, I think him coming into the band has really made that band a million percent better. Because I think he is a perfect fit. What? He was the last. Ray's, of, a, Ray's an awesome. Guy. I mean, not not again, not not the definer to you know discrediting the previous. Correct. Yeah, and I'm sure he was great. But it's it's like I remember one time I uh, I saw uh, Slayer with John Deddy, and I thought, oh my god, John Deddy hits so hard, and he plays the songs at the same tempo that they were on the record. Right. And I just remember thinking. I think this band's like 25% better to be watching it with freaking John Deddy. Right. And, and, and I think a lot can be said for, it's chemistry. It's like putting the guys on the yeah, ball it's not. it's not just beating on the drums or anything. It's all personality. Yes. It's all, you know, it's, it, it's about everything that's involved. I know? think Korn is an excellent band. I didn't get them when they first came out in the early 90s because there weren't really any guitar solos and, and they tuned really far down. So it was right. almost like, having three bass players in the band. Like, I didn't quite resonate to it, but the last three or four records, I think, are absolutely brilliant records. And they're one of those few bands that I, I think are a lot like Fozzie right. in that they just continue to strive to get better and are really pushing themselves. They're not sitting back thinking, you know, hey, our back catalog can carry us through the rest of our career. They really are, are challenging themselves to make interesting and great albums. Uh, so I really dig them. I still think Devin Townsend is probably, you know, one of the greatest artists that we have to be thankful that, that we have in the heavy metal community. Um, I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, I, I obviously I love a lot of European bands because um, I love the musicianship. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I think I, I de I de I'm not just crediting the. I don't want to say the U.S. bands, but I I think the the European. Especially metal bands, they they study like it, it seems like they study music because it just it's so different, and I don't know it's just it's just like amazing like the past ten years, I've discovered so much more music coming me, me from too. there. I'm so funny you say that because, and it's crazy though because I think it's a cultural thing, right? Because, like, when was the last time you saw a band come out of Europe that was like Van Halen or Motley Crue? I can't name one. Right. Like that had that just freaking. <sighs> Like da like Pantera, right. dangerous, like just like crazy, like super showman, amazing. But when was the last time you saw an American band that were just, just like beautiful musicianship, mastering of the instrument? You know, maybe you would say Dream Theater, but maybe Dream Theater is one of the and Tool. There's like two or three of those that that come from that kind of the the artistic side of things that you see more from Europe. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was lucky enough to be on that 70,000 tons of metal cruise with Stuck Mojo two or three years ago. And there was tons of European bands and I was in heaven. I was just like, Amen. you know, I mean, there's a couple, actually Camelot's uh, an American Camelot, band. Camelot, Lacuna Coil. Yeah, yeah excellent good. bands, really good. Matter of fact, I love uh, Tommy's band from, from Camelot, his other band, Seventh Wonder. I think they're amazing. Uh, you know, have that kind of, 80s AOR aesthetic in there, but then they have these prog elements, and Tommy's voice is incredible. Yeah, and I, you know, there's just so much out there, right? It's like definitely. I, I love Sons of Texas. I think they are a, one of my favorite kind of younger aggressive metal bands. I love Joyous Wolf. I think they're really good at capturing that kind of 70s rock star, the the Who and Zeppelin, that kind of aesthetic. Um, and uh, have you seen Jared James Nichols' band yet? I have not. Unbelievable. This will be my first time actually like listening to them. I, I didn't even I didn't even check them out honestly. You know, Jared. Mark my words. I think Jared is the greatest guitar player of his generation, and I say that without any hesitation, any stuttering. <laughs> something special. He reminds me of, 
Stevie Ray Vaughan and Zach Wilde uh, coming together in this beautiful blues rock meets aggressive rock. That's pretty high level right there. <laughs> Dude, he could stand on stage next to any guitar player. Any guitar player. Looking, definitely looking and, and he's the total package because he's an amazing singer. He's got a great look. He's got a great way about him. He has a kind of inviting personality. He's very humble. Um, all he needs is to have one song connect on radio like, you know, Johnny Lang or Kenny Wayne Shepherd or those kind of guys did. Right. Once he has his song that connects, he is going to be a big deal. Uh, mark my words. He is, he's such an amazing guy. And, and, like, the pressure of having to follow that guy every night being as talented as he is is incredible but that's part of um, I think what makes touring so much right. fun is playing with other incredible musicians that push you to want to become right. better awesome yeah um, hell anything else you want to share with anybody just yeah I just uh, yeah I, I stood on I stood on stage and looked down uh, at the bank of California Stadium and I was telling you off camera before we started, that, that I had this one moment where I said to myself during one of the songs, I said, you're opening for Iron Maiden, look up in the arena. Just look at, look from the top of all of this stuff, look out. And then I looked down on the stage and saw, because Iron Maiden stage sets always had not only the, the, the backdrops and the, and, the, and the staging, but the, the actual stage itself right. has, you know, prints on it and textures and I looked down on it and just said okay Everest it really like it's it, like walking walking up that ramp you're like saying okay I've walked past base camp four and I'm headed up to the to the summit and what an incredible experience and it's really motivated all of us to continue to push hard as a band because you know let's be honest there are such incredible young talents out there um and you know, I never want to walk on stage taking what we have achieved and our fan base for granted. I want to earn it every night. I want to push myself. I want to, my bands to push me. I want to look at the Jared James Nichols of the world and use that as, as motivation to go out there and continue to be as good as we can be and push ourselves. And we're, uh, you know, I said we're, we're, we're really on form to put out another great record and to continue what we've been doing, which is, uh, five guys who are best friends. We, I that's, toured, that's the best, man. It just, is, it's it's it's, so it's hard to find four, let alone five, six people it's in a group. Every that, yeah. you know, every band we tour with, they, the singers riding in with the crew guys on their separate bus, or their. It's just it's the weirdest thing, and I've been there. I know. I, right. I know what it's like to be in a band where there's tension. But the juxtaposition is I'm in a band where there's not. And when you can, before the show, when you're not avoiding eye contact with your band members because right. you're pissed, <laughs> it just makes things easier and it makes it more enjoyable because that, again, it's all about chemistry. I want to play angry. I love it. I, that's why I love Eddie Van Halen. He plays, he plays angry. His guitar playing is angry. But I don't want to be angry at my bandmates. Awesome. Well, anything else? Appreciate you taking the time, man. Thank you very much. Means a lot. I'm here at uh, Encore of uh, Tucson, Arizona, man. Hopefully the rest of the tour goes great. Thank you very much. Thanks again, man.